Welcome back, and uh, with all the wing molds uh, done already, and all the ones for the ribs and everything like that all done, there was just one more remaining that we haven't done yet, and it's this little um, sort of L flange here at the top of the strake, the one that I just highlighted in blue there. And you know, it's a pretty simple little thing, but it's necessary in order to have a bonding surface for the top of the strake skin uh, to bond up against the fuselage like that. So um, it was time to actually get this one sorted out and then everything would be done for the wings. So and this is what it's going to look like, uh, well that's what the part's going to look like, although we don't need that little uh, joggle thing at the end anymore because that was going to go under the spar and we've actually got a bracket there now which is in the way so we don't need that. So that'll get lopped off um, and as I create the um, plug here. And this is what it looks like and so I've got a left, right, a left one and a right one there. Um, sort of mirrored so we can just do it in one platform and so that'll just create the plug like that and then the mold will be the reverse of that and be pretty easy to to lay up that part and uh, so that'll be the next one that the guys are doing but no, no real rush on that they're working on the rudders right now and the bracing for this cowling uh, mold got hot wired so it's all nice and level there and uh, so just what remains is to have it glassed in so you can see Zach here is just cutting the various pieces of fiberglass there and just dry fitting them in preparation for doing that. And meanwhile these first two uh, inner rudder skin plugs, um, they're pretty much got the first round of sanding done on those and just about ready to be primed. And here Devon's working on creating a, um, a set of braces for this uh, last uh, aileron uh, mold. You can see just basically cutting that out and making it sort of fit contour the shape there. So the nut plates that I ordered from Spruce showed up, so it was time to um, install them all for all the different holes that I had done. Some of these pieces for the instrument panel um, had already been sort of drilled and tapped, but others there I wanted to put um, nut plates in there uh, just because they can hold things better and last a little bit longer than a tapped hole. Anyway, so I'd, all these holes that have been drilled to mount the instruments, but you know I have to align up and uh, do the nut plates there so they have a hole on either side. And uh, you see that I've got that whole stack there that needs to have the nut plates put on there to replace all those Clecos. And we've got this little countersink tool that Jeff got us a little while ago. allows you to, to um, countersink the holes for the rivets for either side of the nut plate. So I used that on all those and so then started putting all the nut plates on all the various different pieces as you can see. And, and I know I did more than 60 because I had bought 60 and I also used some of the existing ones that we already had. So it was pretty busy for most of Monday, um, drilling all those holes and countersinking them and putting the nut plates in. And some of the ones, you know, we could use our, our little hand press um, to squeeze the, the rivets on there, but some in the center there actually had to do them just old school with a hammer and a and kind of like a punch. Um, anyway, got all those done. And so it's pretty much time to, um, you know, put together the various parts that make up the frame to uh, mount the, the LIUs or the instruments on so I, I was able to do that so here you can see that's mounted on there with some screws and uh, starting to actually come together and look like something so and once all that's done uh, I can continue with the wiring and Jeff got the second half of this mold uh, for this little closeout section for the uh, forward bulkhead done and you see that was so that was Monday got that all laid up and waited for it to cure and then uh, today he got there and uh, trimmed it all off so it's nice and neat and tidy and now he's just I think just waiting for it to cure up a little bit more and then he'll be able to uh, release that from the plug and be able to create that part and Devon finished the bracing for this on Monday and I believe uh, Zach was the one who cut the uh, material for this one so that one just needs to be glass now and then that, that's the last of the aileron molds done and there's Zach busy uh, sanding on the third one of the rudders now. So this is um, one of the outer skins, I guess the left side outer skin, getting that one done. Um, and then, you know, the last one is still to go. So uh, those are coming along nicely. And as you can see over here, um, Jeff already primed the first two. So these are the uh, inner ones, inboard ones. So they got primed and they got the guide coat on there. So they're ready for the next round of sanding. And uh, Jeff actually had to do a little bit of work on there because the top um, edges there weren't very well modeled when I did it in the SolidWorks, but uh, he's made them look super nice, so that's good. 
And now that I got all the units mounted there in that center thing, I'm kind of orienting uh, everything in the same position it will be in the aircraft because all the cables have to be set lengths per the CAD. So in, if I'm going to sort of desk lay it out on the desk, it has to have the same layout. So that's basically what I've done here. I've got everything sort of laid out in the same way and I've got it all powered up again. And you see I've got some of the, re the real battery cables and things that are going to be used there and the, the um, ground connectors and stuff done so anyway moving along with that and uh, you'll see more of that next time because I'm going to be doing a lot more on the wiring um, over the rest of this week anyway that's our update for the first half of this week and thanks again for watching